Hello everyone and good evening from right here in the stately plush but not overly ostentatious Leonard Manor. I'm Fox 9 Chief Meteorologist Ian Leonard. Welcome to the 2020 edition of the Purple Gala. And yes, things are um, a little different. Our first virtual Purple Gala, but of course, different for so, so many reasons. Social distancing has become a big part of our lives. My daughter didn't quite get a graduation ceremony, and I know there are lots of other things that have affected us in so many ways with COVID-19. So I hope you'll bear with us as we get through this digital, virtual gala. And of course, it goes without saying that Alzheimer's has been hit very, very hard in the Alzheimer's community and what's been going on with our long-term care facilities. And through it all and over top of it all, the, the sadness in our community of the uh, horrible, um, senseless death of George Floyd. And through all of that, we wanted to still find a way to come together to talk about everything that's affecting us, to talk about Alzheimer's, to talk about our lives, and to somehow in some small way celebrate the successes of Alzheimer's and the Alzheimer's Association for this year and as we try and move forward against this horrible, insipidous disease. So. Um, you know, when it, when it comes right down to it, it's hard to gather on a night like this, even though we're socially distanced because of what's been going on. And, and I would like to say that our, our hearts here in the Leonard House and at Fox 9 and the Alzheimer's Association, they're heavy. And, uh, you know, I, I think when I leave a room and I say goodbye to people, I always use three words. And I think those three words resonate even more now. I'm a big Elvis Costello fan. And I always say, peace love and understanding and i'd like to use those words as we move through this night to talk about our program you know tonight we're going to talk about peace love and understanding we're going to talk about how difficult it is for the alzheimer's association to continue to do its job we're going to hear how you've been during covid 19 and our quarantine and we're going to listen to some inspiring music and you're saying to yourself okay now we're talking maybe we can have a slight bit a slight tinge a slight detour of a celebration as we get through this evening but first i want to introduce someone who's become a friend of mine after all the years of doing the uh, purple gala sue spaulding is the ceo of the alzheimer's association of minnesota and north dakota i believe in her so sue take it away Thank you so much, Ian, and welcome to all of you. For those of you in Minnesota and North Dakota and around the country, we are grateful you've joined us for the 28th annual Purple Gala. I agree with Ian, this year's gala is bittersweet. We've all been through so much over the past few months. For our team, volunteers, and constituents in the Twin Cities, it's been especially difficult. We've been mourning the tragic death of George Floyd and working to understand how our organization can help in this time of unrest. The Twin Cities is hurting as we've come to terms with disparities for our communities of color. And I know we aren't alone. Access to quality health care is not readily available to many individuals of color. And for the past two years, the association has increased our efforts to address these health inequities through our collaboration with community health clinics, organizations, and faith groups, we've been able to help augment their good work. Still, we know we need to do more. These disparities are even more apparent during COVID-19, impacting our communities of color in a way that mirrors Alzheimer's and dementia. We know that African Americans and Latinos are at greater risk than any other ethnic group or race. COVID-19 has also impacted seniors and those living with Alzheimer's at an alarming rate. For our community, the days are long, difficult, and often isolating. At this moment, there are 5.8 million people living with Alzheimer's in the United States, and they are cared for by 16 million unpaid caregivers. This is a disease that is relentless, but so are we. I am proud to report that within two weeks of working remotely because of COVID-19, all of our programs and services were converted to virtual options, including support groups, care consultations, and community education programs. Our 24-7 helpline, which is available in 200 languages, also continues to be there for those who have questions or simply need support. Collaborating with our partners in government and community organizations, 
we remain at the forefront of advocacy efforts as champions for those living in long-term care facilities where almost half of the residents have some form of dementia. And just this week, these efforts helped pass legislation in Minnesota that will provide support for caregivers. As the largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's research, our national and international grants, totaling $185 million, have funded 540 research projects in 30 countries this year alone. We are so proud of that. So tonight, as we join together, please contribute to our efforts and choose hope. Hope for the vulnerable individuals we serve. Hope for the caregivers who do all that they can for the people they love. Hope that our research efforts find a cure for dementia and Alzheimer's. Your generosity is so appreciated. Together, we will defy Alzheimer's and all other dementia. Lastly, we want to thank our spectacular Purple Gala Committee and our sponsors who helped make this virtual event a reality. Now to kick off this evening of inspiration and action, let's go to our Purple Gala co-chairs, Eric and Carolyn Thomas. Good evening and welcome to the 28th annual Twin Cities Alzheimer's Association Purple Gala. My wife Carolyn and I are honored to be chairing this year's first ever online virtual event. We're happy to welcome guests from across the country this year and are grateful that you are gathering with us tonight. We have a wonderful program lined up for you this evening. It's a chance for all of us to sit back and relax, to hear about the work of the association and to bid on some fun auction items. But most importantly, thank you for joining us as we come together to defy Alzheimer's. We do, we do have a special night planned. We have a live and a silent auction um, and we have a surprise musical guest a bit later. Um, but I think it's important to remember why we are here, why I'm in my basement semi-dressed up and why you're at home dressed up, wearing sweatpants, just lounging around, sort of checking in on this broadcast as we get through this very special evening. Um, you know, the pandemic has been sort of all encompassing. It's changed the way we have worked. It has changed the way our kids have or have not gone to school. It's changed the way we traveled. This is my basement. I broadcast live for nine straight weeks on Fox 9 from this very location. In the past six days, I've actually gone back to the station, but we're still socially distanced and still trying to figure out um, how we do things. And you know, when we get together every year and we talk about the Purple Gala, I always talk a little bit about my experiences with Alzheimer's. Um, many of you who've seen me over the years know Alzheimer's has ravaged my family. I lost uh, my grandfather on my mother's side and my grandfather on my father's side. Five years ago, I lost my father on Christmas Eve and my mother, uh, as of today, is in stage seven, the very final stages of this awful disease. Um, and she is basically in a vegetative state in a, uh, in a care facility up in Canada. And the cruel part about all this is I can't even go visit her because the border is still closed to Canada well into the end of July. It's, um, you know, it's exhausting. It's an exhausting disease. It, it drains all of us. It takes all of our will to care for our loved ones with Alzheimer's and all of our, our, our energy. And at the end of the day, we don't have much left. And my mother developed early onset Alzheimer's and the doctors have said over the years that my father became so very, very tired caring for my mother that, that they think that's one of the reasons or one of the, the, the causative factors for him developing Alzheimer's and, and going downhill so quickly and, and, and losing him on Christmas Eve. And of course, I'm sure you imagine Christmas Eve is uh, a little different in our family. I'm sure there are some days that are different in, in your family too because of Alzheimer's. But um, if you've watched uh, me on Fox 9 over the last seven weeks, you know, long-term care facilities have been locked down just like everyone else. So in those facilities, there are our loved ones, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, and they are locked down, especially in uh, memory care facilities. So I started going live every Thursday from a different long-term care facility outside, never went inside, took my dog just to say hi. We love you, we care about you, and, and uh, it's really resonated. And I would tell you, if you have a chance to make a sign and go to a long-term care facility and walk upside, uh, outside and just hold up a sign that says, we love you, we'll all get through this together. Um, it's, easy, it's easier than you think to do it, and it makes, it makes so many people smile. Um, 
Margaret, Mary Margaret Lehman. Um, she's a big longtime friend and volunteer and advocate of the association. She's faced all of these changes that I've been talking about in my family, some of the changes and challenges you felt in your family. Um, she's the caregiver for her husband, Ken. And we got the chance to talk to Mary Margaret on Zoom, of course on Zoom because of social distancing. And here's what she had to say. Hi, thank you so much. Gosh, I've been doing this for so long. I thought I had most of the answers, but everything's changed with this virus. It's been such a hard part of our journey. When my love and I were first dating, he would send me sweet poems, little love notes, which I still have in a special box. It's gold and pink and sparkles in the sun. And they are so beautiful and so heartfelt. Ken was diagnosed with early stage Alzheimer's in 2009. It upset my wife greatly because she didn't know what to do. My mother read Winnie the Pooh books. She christened each family member as one of Pooh's friends. I was Piglet. I have grown to become very brave and useful. I am a caregiver. But I just didn't know how brave I'd have to be. We've learned how to change and adapt. Our connection to the Alzheimer's Association has been such a blessing and my community on Twitter. And then this unforeseen challenging layer for caregivers, the coronavirus was causing disruption in our daily lives. But at first we were managing. We went for a brisk half hour walk. It's 38 degrees in Minnesota, good for body, mind and spirit, invigorating too. And then almost overnight, we were isolated. Ducks haven't come back yet. No, they haven't. So grateful my love is home. I can care for him 24 seven. He is still fragile and quiet. I can't imagine him isolated in a semi-lit hospital room. Still, caring for him at home has brought new challenges. Being a caregiver 24 hours per day is huge compared to 22 hours per day. Am I complaining? I am and I so apologize. Isolation from human contact is unhealthy for body, mind and spirit. Isolation for a person with a serious condition can be devastating. We are social beings. Yesterday was a very hard day for my love. He was sad angry, not in self. I didn't sleep until 3 a.m. It occurred to me, he is frightened, but could not express it any other way. Our Alzheimer's family is really hurting right now. My heart goes out to caregivers who are caring long distance. Living with COVID in our communities means more of us are long distance caregivers. It is heartbreaking. Most important, we must take care of ourselves as caregivers for our loved ones. I feel very strongly that it is important to be open and share this journey. By talking about Alzheimer's, by tweeting about it, by bringing it out from behind closed doors and windows, I hope to reduce the stigma of Alzheimer's. My love is still a viable, talented, and capable person in so many ways. We still celebrate what he can still do and be.
So, why are we here? You heard it from Mary Margaret and uh, her story with her husband, Ken. Um, they are so brave and they are so honest in sharing their story. And, and that's one of the reasons we get together for the Alzheimer's Purple Gala every year is you see different people talking to different tables and, and, and friends and people who are rapidly becoming friends and people who aren't friends yet because sharing your story makes this so very, very important. And uh, Mary Margaret's Twitter is going up tonight as I speak. So if you want to reach out to her uh, by social media, by all means, reach out. If you want to reach out to me, I'm at Ian underscore Leonard. And if you have something to say about uh, Alzheimer's or the Purple Gala or, or anything else, um, we'd all love to hear from you because we can't get together. So let's build our friendships online and, and through social media. Um, Mary Margaret and Ken are not alone in their journey. Um, Ken's not alone in the challenges he's facing. And I'll tell you, you are not alone because if any of you have been impacted by dementia and Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Association is here for you. So that's not just getting together and talking about it. That's not just getting together and having an auction. That's not just getting together and, and having a walk to remember. All of those things are so amazingly important, but is the sum of everything we do every day, every week, every month of every year that makes the association stronger. It's the sum of all that that gives us the ability to fight against Alzheimer's. And so that's why we're here, to talk about it, to raise awareness and to put all that together and to put some funds in the bank. So it is now my extraordinary opportunity to introduce someone who talks very, very fast and will possibly help liberate some of the funds from your wallet that's not even in your back pocket because let's face it, you're wearing sweatpants and you're at home on the couch. Um, ladies and gentlemen, our auctioneer tonight, Sarah Jean Knox. Sarah. Thank you, Ian. It is so fun to see inside your home. I bet that's weird that you're the only one whose home we can actually see into tonight. But I wanna thank the rest of you for welcoming, welcoming us into your home. It is an honor to be here with the Alzheimer's Association because like many of you, Alzheimer's has deeply impacted my family. I've lost my grandpa Mac to Alzheimer's. I lost my aunt Vicki to early onset Alzheimer's. And I watched my grandma, who was one of my closest friends, live her final years with dementia. Most recently, my husband also lost his grandmother Beverly to this horrible disease. So we have seen firsthand the toll it takes on people living with Alzheimer's, but also on the family and loved ones who set the rest of their lives on hold to become full-time caretakers. It's emotionally and physically draining, and I know what you've been through and what you're going through now. And like Ian said before, you are not alone. Everyone who is watching right now is with you. The fact that you all showed up tonight and are watching from the other side of the screen tells me your commitment to the community of people dealing with the daily effects of Alzheimer's. And we are so grateful for you. Right now, we are going to come together for the most important part of the evening where you get to partner with the Alzheimer's Association to help support their full mission. This means that your gifts are going to provide the critical advocacy efforts, research, education, programs, and services that families need right now more than ever. Earlier, we heard from Mary Margaret about how this association was her lifeline after Ken was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And she's not alone. Thousands of families rely on the Alzheimer's Association's 24-7 hotline, the educational classes and support groups, and the need continues to grow. Right now, more than ever, Sue Spaulding tells us that referrals to the Alzheimer's Association have tripled since the beginning of COVID-19. So it is clear that the association offers what the public needs right now. And I know that we're not all physically in the same room together, but we need to show up stronger than ever. So if you want to be a leader tonight at $20,000 or $15,000, go right ahead and make your commitment right now on the right side of your screen. If you're watching this on your phone, you can find that right below this live stream. Or maybe you've been clicking the link to your bid pal and you can give right through there just where you've been bidding on auction items. 
I know you all want to help others who are navigating how to move forward with life after a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And maybe you can't be there with them all the time to hold their hand and give them resources. I, like, I know you would want to if you could, but the Alzheimer's Association can do that. Their helpline is available 24-7 to caregivers or healthcare staff to call and get resources or just to have someone to listen to them. Your donation is literally providing a listening ear that is a lifeline to so many of our caregivers. If you are committing $10,000, go ahead and make that commitment. I'm already seeing some of those come through. Thank you so much to our gala chairs, Eric and Carolyn Thomas. I see another 10,000 an anonymous donation coming in. Thank you so much. Jean and Albert Levine, thank you for your $10,000 donation. Another anonymous one coming in. And Carol Lee Randall and William, the William E. Smucker Foundation, thank you so much for your $10,000 donation. Uh, Nancy and Kevin, you just sent that in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. At $10,000, if you can do $5,000 right now, go ahead, put it in the side of your screen. Again, that's just to the right or below the stream, depending if you're watching on desktop or mobile. John and Susan Campbell, thank you for your $5,000 donation. I'm seeing Nancy just put in $2,500. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Continue to put those in, but I am especially excited to announce an incredible match we've received tonight. Tonight's challenge match of $62 thousand dollars is a collection of donations from several members of the Astrup family. In memory of their father and grandfather Leonard Astrup who passed away from Alzheimer's and Lewy body dementia and also in memory of their mother and grandmother Corrine Astrup who was his loving caregiver for many years. The Astrup family members of multiple generations wanted to come together to continue the importance of giving and generosity that their parents and grandparents taught them and wanted to honor tonight with these gifts. And I think this is so beautiful, this gift of multi-generational -genera generosity, because I know so many of you are at home right now, sitting on your couch or your patio with your family. It's something that you get to do with your kids and your loved ones and you are building into their lives by showing them your generosity tonight. So I wanna thank you so much. I am seeing these $1,000 donations come in. Gretchen and Wade, Paul, David, Mike and Nancy, thank you so much. Continue to get those in. We are, we have up to $62,000 that they're gonna match at the $1,000 donor level. So maybe you gave 5,000 and you wanna stretch that generosity to 6,000, go for it. That extra thousand is going to be matched tonight. Maybe you were considering $500 this evening and I encourage you to stretch that to $1,000 so you can have that matched. Continue to put those in on the phone in the screen right now. Uh, you are making such a huge difference. I'm seeing Marvin and Elaine, Eva and Lisa are all putting in donations. Sue and Ron, thank you. You're getting matched tonight, Sue and Ron. I am so grateful for you. Mark and Jane, thank you so much. It is because of your choice to give that, that the Alzheimer's Association is able to make real changes. Just this week, this chapter's public policy team actually just got legislation passed in Minnesota that's going to provide grants to caregivers who, who need respite. This is the sort of direct impact you are making right now. Real change. Things are happening. You can also give at $500, $250, $100, or any amount that's on your heart. Your choice to give to the Alzheimer's Association is what is so meaningful. Another $10,000 donation from Karen and Walter. Thank you so much. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for that $1,000 donation. Another Kevin is coming in at $1,500. Uh, David and Katie, thank you so much. I'm sorry, these names are coming in so fast. I am going to try and get to, through as many of you as possible. Your generosity is just blowing us away tonight. I want to thank you to all of you who are putting in those gifts right now. Your generosity is so amazing. And it's you coming together like this to support the Alzheimer's Association that is making a huge difference tonight. This association appreciates the support from all of you who are watching from home. And they also appreciate the support they get from local corporate leaders helping in the fight against Alzheimer's within their own companies and within our own Alzheimer's community. 
We'd like to recognize some of our sponsors tonight. First, our Amethyst sponsor, Richard McNamara Foundation, and our Platinum sponsor, Oppidan, for their generous support. And thank you to all of our sponsors tonight. I, we couldn't do any of this without you. You have been continually generous to the Alzheimer's Association. But the Alzheimer's Association, Minnesota, North Dakota chapter, is especially grateful to this year's 2020 Purple Gala Corporate Honoree, Allianz Life for its significant support and leadership, not only for our Purple Gala this year, but for their community support of so many events. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome Walter White, CEO of Allianz Life. Thank you, Walter, for all that you and Allianz Life do. On behalf of Allianz Life and all of our employees, thank you for honoring us with this award. Our partnership with the Alzheimer's Association, Minnesota, North Dakota, dates back many years, and it's one of our most valued community relationships. When we made the decision years ago to collaborate with the association, we knew that we had a unique opportunity to support an organization doing critical work. The need for their research and services only continues to grow, but the positive impact the association is having in the lives of so many is truly astounding. At Allianz Life, making a difference in the lives of those in the community is integral to our values and has helped us in our journey to become a strong and trusted business. We're proud to support the association in numerous ways, but perhaps what I'm most proud of are the contributions of our employees through their direct involvement and volunteerism in support of the association, in particular through events such as our Driving to Donate golf tournament and the Walk to End Alzheimer's. But like all true partnerships, giving is not a one-way street. Many of our employees have been impacted by this disease, either directly or via family members and friends. And it's the association that's been there for them. By their own account, they've seen the association in action and at its finest firsthand from their ability to access association information and support services to their valuable on-site workshops. The support provided has indeed helped to strengthen our business and our community. At Allianz Life, we all wear purple, both on our sleeves and in our heart. Thank you for this honor, and we look forward to our continued partnership for many years to come. Thank you again, Allianz Life. And Walter, I love that you mentioned wearing purple on your sleeve and in your heart, because even though the Purple Gala is virtual tonight, we all want to feel like we're together, right? And what better way to do that than by showing off our purple? So for a moment, let's have some fun. In the spirit of our gala's theme, purple attire, admired but not required, we still want to see everyone's purple this year. So show us why you wear purple. I wear purple for my Grandpa Mac and my Aunt Vicky, but I want to know who you are wear purple for. So take a selfie or a photo of your family or friends or colleagues and share it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag, hashtag ALZ Purple Gala. And while you're on there, check out other people's posts, share some support with them, like them, comment on them, let them know you're also watching tonight because that's a really great way for us all to come together. And I know I'm really excited once we are done tonight to log on and see all of your purple. Um, so make sure you get that on there because I am very excited for that. And I know some of you are still getting in those donations and have been bidding on the auction items for quite a while now. So let's highlight some of our live auction items. <laughs> uh, these items are gonna be open in BidPal until 9 p.m. tonight. And let's see how high we can get on these bids right now. So open up your BidPal, open up to that live auction section. I'm not gonna be rattling off bids for you tonight, but you can go on in and just outbid people as fast as you can. So we're gonna go right into this. Our first auction item is a private dining and wine experience for eight led by master chef, junior contestant, Ariana Fagan. If you do not know who this young prodigy is, we're going to play a short video for you. First up, Joe, Christine and I likened this dish as restaurant quality beyond belief. Absolutely the dish of the night. Ariana! For a sixth grader to be able to put together a stuffed pork chop that's so flavorful, so ethnically specific, is kind of amazing. Thank you so much. 
visually, this dish is a 10. The thought that a 12-year-old just came up with this dish in a matter of minutes is incredibly impressive. I think you knocked it out of the park tonight, young lady. Nice job. Ariana is actually going to prepare dinner for eight people, including you if you win this item. And each course will be paired with wines from Ariana's dad, you know, since she's a minor, <laughs> Lenny Fagan. And he is a Napa Valley Wine Academy certified sommelier and a French wine scholar. What a fun father-daughter activity this is gonna be for them and to serve you. This package is valid for eight people on a mutually agreed upon date. So go on in and bid that up. But our next item is the ultimate VIP sports package. Ernst & Young, who apparently has amazing seats at every sporting event is going to be giving our winner, look at these, all of these here. We have eight seats in their 50 yard line suite for a regular season Vikings game. And this is gonna come with uh, catered food, beverages, and two sideline passes for the pregame warmups. You're also gonna get four tickets to a Twins game in their Champions Club, which includes drinks and food. And these seats are located right behind home plate, closer to the batter, um, and better sight lines than the pitcher has. So that is lucky for you. <laughs> Four VIP tickets to a regular Timberwolves game located center court in row three and four VIP tickets to a regular season Minnesota Wild game. And these seats are located on the lower level blue line. So you get great seats at all of these different events. This current bid is currently at $8,000. And so let's keep bidding that up. Let's get that to 10 tonight. I know we can do this. And I know that sometimes you also want to actually play a sport. So Mike O'Leary, the Ernst & Young office managing partner, is going to host you and three guests um, and their caddies for lunch or dinner and drinks along with this ultimate Minnesota VIP package. So go on to BidPal, check out all the details for that because I know there's so much information in there and bid it up. Our third package is a getaway for one week at the Timbers in Bachelor Gulch, Colorado. And this just looks so beautiful. This is near Vail, Beaver Creek, Breckenridge, Keystone, Crested Butte, and it's just in the heart of so many of the amazing mountain activities for both summer and winter lovers. And I'm personally more of a hiker than a skier. Um, you just fall down less hiking than you do skiing. But I know some of you are far more coordinated than I am and will want to head down some slopes. So the winner gets to choose be from one of three available weeks. There's some in the summer, one in the winter that you can choose from. So go ahead and bid on that. It is currently at $3,900 for the top bid. Keep bidding that up. I believe the next bid is $4,400. Go ahead. You're going to want to head to the mountains pretty soon. So go bid on that. Next up, we have a package for our golfers. And I know it was rainy out this morning, but it's gorgeous out right now. And maybe some of you were even out golfing this morning. I don't know, it depends how hardcore you are. But you're gonna get to golf at the following eight courses. You get to golf at Interlochen, North Oaks, Wyzetta, Minnesota Valley, Bear Path, Mendocota, Edina, and TPC Twin Cities. This golfing is available for the 2020 and 2021 seasons, which is good because it seems like you're going to have a lot of golfing to get in over these next two summers. So go ahead and bid on that. It's currently at $1,950. Go get that bid up. You know you want to go. It's a safe activity to do right now. Even when we were in a shelter in place, they're like, yeah, go golfing. I know you can do that. Go bid on it. It'll be great. Our last item is the chance to fly to New York and watch a live taping of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. So you are gonna receive two VIP tickets to a live taping and two round trip tickets on Southwest. The current bid on this I have right here, $1,750. Go ahead, bid that in. It's gonna be a great and fun experience for you and whoever you choose to bring as your guest. I mean, you could bring a stranger. It's really up to you. So just go and enjoy that. Bid that up. This, these are all open until nine o'clock tonight. So I know so, these are awesome auction items and we have seen those bids rise over the past few minutes, which means I know you are making an even bigger impact on the lives of people being served by the Alzheimer's Association. But don't slow down now because these will be open until 9 p.m. But I wanna thank all of you for your generosity, your generosity in the auction and in the 
the funding moment and all of this throughout all of your support that you've continued to give. And I'm seeing that they are trying to get me a current total where we are right now. So please keep bidding and giving because the total raised so far from this event uh, it is so far from this event, but I know we're open a little bit more. We are at 6,000, 44, you guys, this is just such a good number. We have $644,304 so far. I know I see those numbers continuing to come in, rolling in on the screen that I have in front of me. You are amazing. Continue to bring those in. Now, I am just so impressed with the impact you are able to make. Who knew that we could do this from our own couches this evening? So be proud of yourself, hug your loved ones, stand up, cheer, and have another drink. But. We have so many wonderful things coming to you after this, and I am pleased to welcome back our co-chairs for tonight's event, Eric and Carolyn Thomas. Thank you all for your generosity. We hope you enjoyed tonight's program and learned a little bit more about the work of the Alzheimer's Association and why it is something we are both passionate about. On behalf of everyone at the association, the incredible Purple Gala Planning Committee, and from both of us, thank you for helping us defy Alzheimer's. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. Thank you again, Carolyn and Eric, and big thank you to everyone who made tonight possible. I can't tell you how many people behind the scenes it takes to put something like this together. Many, many Zoom calls, and by the way, I... <laughs> I'm, do I'm done with Zoom, even though we're here together tonight, um, socially distanced by social media, if you will, and virtually on the internet. Man, is it me or is Zoom just kind of crazy? Nonetheless, it is what we need to do. Um, it's one of the ways we can get through these really difficult times. Um, many of our communities are, are in pain. Our Alzheimer's community is in pain. Um, the Twin Cities, all of Minnesota, all of the United States, the world, people feel the pain and they feel the need for change. And, and it resonates with us here um, as we continue to try and make a change. Remember what I said earlier, peace, love, and understanding. Um, you know, it, they're cliches. Be kind to one another. It's another cliche. But when I go out and I talk to large groups, I always leave them with the same question. And I've done this for years, and it's a question we try and use in our family. When you wake up in the morning, say, what am I gonna do for somebody else today? And when you go to bed at night, think in your head, what did I do for somebody else today? Whether it's with Alzheimer's, or our fight against racism, or our fight against COVID, what did you do for somebody else today? I'd like you to take that with you and remember those three words, peace, love, and understanding. And know that you're in this fight with many, many other people. You're not gonna be alone. At Ian underscore Leonard on Twitter. I'll help your fight. I'll ask you to help me in my fight. And together, if we fight the good fight, then I think we got this thing. I think we start moving down that road, taking that uncomfortable step, one step at a time together to make change, whether it's Alzheimer's or in society and it's change against systemic racism and everything else. Um, I'm with it and I'm with you. Um, I wanna leave you tonight from my basement after our virtual gala with a, a little musical tribute from Jay Allen. He's a country music star, he's a dear friend and he wrote a new song called War For You and I just wanna read it. Um, it's basically about um, the caregivers out there right now. And when I go out to the long-term care facilities and I'm live on Fox 9, I always try and get them to come to the windows, the caregivers, the heroes. You know, you see those signs everywhere that say, heroes work here. These are heroes. And um, this is Jay Allen, War For You, speaking about our loved ones and the heroes who take care of them. Peace, love. And understanding. Bye, everyone. I'm Fox 9 Chief Meteorologist Ian Leonard. Fight the good fight. Hold you in the dawn. What's up, Alzheimer's Association Purple Gala in Minneapolis? This is Jay Allen coming at you from Quarantine in Nashville, Tennessee. 
How cool to be a part of your virtual event this evening and even more special to me that I get to share with you a song that I wrote in response to the caregivers that took care of my mother before she passed away from early onset Alzheimer's. We just released this song uh, and it means so much to me. It's called War For You. Check it out. If you're broke and feeling weary, so tired from the fight, if your world is slowly sinking, so hard to see the light, if you can't find the strength to go on another day and your back's against the wall I walk through every fire stand tall right there beside you be the one to get you through yeah I'll face the lion take on every giant there's nothing I wouldn't do Go war for you. I'd go to war for you. It's okay to reach for someone to hold you in the dark. And it's okay to need somebody. Who's stronger than you are? If you can't find the strength to go on for another day, I walk through every fire, stand tall right there beside you, be the one to catch you through. Yeah, I'll face the lion. Take on every giant There's nothing I wouldn't do I'd go to war for you I'd go to war for you Thanks, y'all. Have an awesome evening. Thanks for having me.